Thank you very much for coming to International Center for Spoken Speaker Series. Um, you know, today I am very excited and honored to have um, you know one of our proud graduates, University of Georgia Sport Management, Leslie Dodd. You know, she was class of 2012, and so she was you know, in your place not long ago. And let me briefly introduce her career in the sport industry. Uh, during her sophomore year, she interned for the Houston Texan as one of five corporate development interns. That internship solidified her passion for football and dream of pursuing a job on the football side of the organization. To experience a different side of the sport industry and to build a resume, Leslie chose working in the athletic department for the Bulldogs Club. Through working for the UGA Athletics Annual Fund, she explored fundraising for athletics and learned what an intricate part of collegiate sports it was. Uh, following graduation, she did an internship with um, a very famous place, Evo Shield in Athens. There she experienced areas of corporate sponsorship, fundraising, and marketing. And following the internship, she moved to Lexington, Kentucky, where she accepted a role for the Kentucky Wildcats football team as a recruiting volunteer. There she climbed up the ladder to become recruiting assistant to football operation assistant role under the head coach, Mark Stoops for a year. After a year with Kentucky, last year she accepted a position as scouting assistant for the Jacksonville Jaguars. After working for the Jaguars for close to a year, uh, over a year, she received a promotion to her current role as administrator of scouting operations for the Jaguars. So without further ado, uh, this month's International Center for Sport Management Speaker Series lecturer, Leslie Nye. So, as you said, recent graduate, two years ago, kind of weird, but this is a great major. I, uh, I have some friends that are here this weekend. We'll see how much y'all make it back to Athens once you graduate. I promise it'll be more than you, than you would like to admit. I would spend every weekend here if I could. Um, so, as you said, um, talk a little bit about my background. Sophomore year, I kind of always knew I wanted to be in sports. I'm sure y'all have known that as well, um, or at least just been really maybe over, overly passionate as I am about football um, or whatever sport you're, you prefer. Uh, my internship with the Texans was in corporate development. Um, got really lucky when I got it. Just kind of wanted to get my foot in the door anywhere. And like I said, luck, I got lucky with the Houston Texans getting my first internship with an NFL team. It was incredible. Um, through that internship, I was doing anything and everything. I mean, I was up at 4 a.m. The, the main part of the internship was training camp. And we were up at 4 a.m. just doing anything and everything you can imagine. Um, serious grunt work. It was amazing because it told me two things. It told me, okay, I want to be in football. And then it told me, I want to be on the football side. I love, you know, the business side. I loved, I have tons of friends that are on the business side. It's huge, uh, big money maker. But I wanted to be on the football side. So I came back to Georgia and said, sport management is what my major has to be. Um, I got a minor in, in economics because my father really wanted me to continue with that, and I'm glad he made me because uh, it was a, it was a lot of class, but it was it was good, and y'all are already taking a bunch of business classes in sport management. So, um, had my second dabble in the sports world be with my senior practicum. Uh, I was interning for the Bulldog Club. I don't know if y'all know what that is. It basically ticket ticket holders at Georgia have to pay to, to get season tickets. You have to. Most big football programs run it that way. But it provides all the scholarships for all of our guys and, and girls. It you know really does a lot. So that kind of let me see the fundraising side of things. Um, and as I continued, I was like, all right, I'm going to explore everything I can so I know exactly what I want to do. And when I go in for a job, I can say, look, I've done fundraising, I've done corporate development, I've done marketing, which led me to EvoShield. And EvoShield is huge, it's growing, great, 
great place to work. Um, I'm sure they need interns. I don't know if any of y'all have reached out to them, but it's right in Athens, and they are doing big things. So, worked in marketing for Evo Shield for a summer right after I graduated. Wasn't exactly ready to leave Athens, so kind of found something that allowed me to stay around for a summer after I graduated. Um, that's when I contacted Kentucky, which I'm from Lexington, so it was kind of an easy transition. I was going to move home to Lexington, volunteer at Kentucky, um, and just kind of try to get my foot in the door on the football side. Um, since I knew after working all these different internships, I knew that's what I wanted to do, which is important to feel around like that. Um, they said, sure, come on, volunteer and recruiting, we can always take a volunteer. Um, and you'll find that people won't turn down volunteers usually. Um, so I started volunteering in the recruiting department at UK and then slowly but surely built my way up to a recruiting assistant part-time, which means I was making minimum wage and working crazy hours, 70 hour weeks, just insane minimum wage, like I said, but it was something and I was, and I was in there. I started under Coach Phillips, Joker Phillips, um, his staff, they were released, which was probably the first big hurdle I encountered working in the football world. I was the only girl in the staff, and you can imagine, Coach Phillip was released, and his whole staff was released with him. These are men that are your dad's age, who just, like that, didn't have a job. And all of us that were working under them, whether it was in football operations, recruiting, we were all like, okay, great, so we're not gonna have jobs. So now what do we do? And so it was just this kind of stalled period. And it really was so difficult because you saw a side of people that you wouldn't normally see. A side of people that are fighting for their livelihood. You know, like they, they were like, oh my gosh, I, I don't have a job, what am I going to do? And it kind of showed a really intense side of people. Um, unfortunately, I'm glad I experienced it in my first year in the industry because that's pretty common in football. Staffs are turned over like that because programs are so win hungry, which of course they are. That's what the game is about. So staffs are turned over pretty quickly and it's a very cutthroat industry. So we just kind of were hanging out, um, recruiting, football ops, the coaches were obviously gone, but there was a handful of us, maybe 10 of us, including the GAs, who were, who were all just kind of standing there. We didn't know who the next head coach was going to be or anything. Coach Stoops, Mark Stoops, I'm sure y'all are, if not familiar with him, at least familiar with his brothers. His brother Bob is the head coach at Oklahoma, he's been there 14 seasons. His, the middle brother is actually the D coordinator there, Mike, and he was the head coach at Arizona. So he comes from a famous football family. He was hired as our head coach at Kentucky. First head coaching job for him, he was the D coordinator at Florida State. Um, obviously left Florida State's defense in pretty prime condition. They went on to win the national championship. So he's a defensive guy. He came in, he was our head coach, and fortunately, he kept us around, which was great because a lot of times head coaches will come in and bring, you know, some of their people, which he did. He brought a lot of his guys in, but um, we were fortunate. We stuck around. And I continued in recruiting until about midway through, I decided I wanted to move into football operations, which on a collegiate level, I'll kind of describe all this as I go because when I was sitting here two years ago, I had a pretty good idea, but there are a lot of things I didn't know, and a lot of things I found out, and I was like, I mean, I just had no idea where all this was. So, moved into football ops, and I'll explain all this later, um, and finally got a call from the Jaguars, um, out of the blue, offering to fly me down to interview, and uh, for a scouting assistant position, and I was like, oh my gosh, this you know, a dream come true, of course, because it just moves me that much further into the football 
side and of course, you know, working for an NFL team is just dream come true, full time job. I was still technically part time even though I was getting paid overtime and I was treated like a full time employee at UK. Um, so flew down, interviewed with the Jaguars, got the job, moved down seven days later. Um, my current job, so I started with the Jags as a scouting assistant. Four months in, they gave me a promotion in responsibilities and monetarily, but not a title promotion, just monetary bump and responsibilities. Um, I started, when I was the assistant, started off doing a bunch of administrative stuff, um, booking travel for all the scouts, booking travel for our general manager, doing stuff like that. My bosses knew that I wanted to be more hands-on in the football process. Um, so finally, doing a bunch of grunt work, whatever, I got my second promotion, which was the title promotion, to scouting ops, scouting operations, um, which is where I currently am. So my position now, these are just kind of some of the things I do. Um, currently in season, for every game, the scouts will go and scout the week before. And we make, not, this is my boss, the director of pro personnel goes and does this. We make a advanced scouting report that goes to all of the coaches and the general manager. And this report I actually have, I'll show it to y'all. Um, it's about 40, 50 pages long. It's a breakdown of everything that the opponent does. Personnel groupings, you know, a, my boss watches every single player on the roster and does a paragraph summary of this player. Um, and then we do formations, anything and everything you can imagine, to the weather in the stadium and, you know, the wind and what, how it affects. You would just be amazed at some of the things that these that the coaches need to know. Because the, the point of the advance report is coaches don't have time to watch every single player that they're about to encounter, break down every single game that this player has, you know, even taken a snap in, and then game plan for who we're about to play. They just don't have time to do it all. They need to, to focus on game planning. So the scouts, the pro scouts break down all of the opposing team's schemes, the players, everything, put it in a report so the coaches have it to read over and they can say, okay, boom, I, I know the ins and outs of every single player. Now we can start to game plan and scheme against their strengths and their weaknesses. Um, so that's the advanced report. The waiver wire, every day <coughs> the NFL, the league, sends out a wire to every team, 32 teams, saying who got released by teams, who got released that was a vested veteran. A vested veteran is a player that has been in the league for four years. So vested vets that were released. Now that is a big deal because when you encounter a vested veteran, you're encountering their salary as well. They have a different salary once they've played in the league for a few years. Um, so vested veterans that were released, then they also come out with who was released due to injuries. And then they also have a section for practice squad guys. Practice squad guys were added to teams practice squads and guys that were released. For, if y'all don't know what the practice squad is, there are 53 active players on every NFL team. The practice squad is made up of seven guys. They do everything, they just don't play. They come to all the practices, they make very good money, um, and their hope is to obviously make an active roster. The seven guys are basically the guys that are good enough to, they're right there, they're developmental guys. You know, they can, if you develop them, they can be on an active roster at some point but they're just not developed yet. They're not ready to take on that role yet. So they send out the practice squad guys. I'm going to show you um, these examples. Sorry, so go back to the advance real quick. This is our, this is actually 
what we did for the Colts game. Um, and I put this, I, I do it all. I do all the stats, the schemes. What I don't do is the player evaluation summaries. That's my, the director of pro personnel, he does those. But I put this all together. So as you see, you have their, their roster numerically. We have their roster broken down by position. We have their 2014 stats so far. Um, that's defense. We have our comparison, our numbers compared to them so far. Um, their roster from the previous week. And then this is the advanced game. So my boss will go in, watch the game, say, all right, here are their injuries. Here are the guys that are inactives. We put all this injury information right in there. And he writes a summary up of the game, kind of what happened. We have a snapshot of their coaching staff. And you know who's on the radios, who's doing subs, all that good stuff. Um, a snapshot of their offense, and then more of a snapshot of their offense, kind of their personnel groupings up here, stuff like that. And then he writes just a little summary about the position groupings. We go down and we have their starting lineup on offense, high weight <coughs> speed, and then a one-liner about each player. And then you get to the second page, you have all of their player by position with a little more in-depth and I do these up here. I do all their statistic notes and all that. Um, so keep going by position. Um, then we get down to defense, same thing. Defense, personnel groups, notes, summaries, <coughs> their starting lineup for defense. Um, and then the same thing for special teams. We do a, a breakdown. We show how they line up for special teams and stuff like that. So that's the advance. Um, and, you know, that's literally what we work on all week. I know it sounds, it's just, you would be shocked at how time consuming it is. 50 pages of that in, you know, in depth analysis of a team, it's, uh, it's very time consuming. Um, the waiver wire, so after every, when the NFL sends that out to us, I take it, it usually gets sent out at night, I take it and I put it into a spreadsheet for our head coach, Gus, Gus Bradley, our GM, our owner, and my two direct bosses, the director of college personnel and the director of pro personnel. Um, take it, let's zoom in here. So you have a player's name, his position. This is practice squad, who was released from practice squad that day. Um, what team he was with, if he's played or started in any games. Jack Fit for us is uh, a character code. So, um, you know, we do, we check character codes. If, you know, with, I've heard, I'm sure you all have heard of some of the current, current situations going on in the NFL. We try, you know, we try to bring in top notch character players um, to be with our franchise. Um, medical, you know, if they're, if they're released because they're have an injury, we obviously want to note that. So college, age, height, weight, speed, and then we have our grades for them and their agent information in case our head coach or our GM says, yeah, let's, let's bring them in call his agent. So that is the waiver. And I do that every <coughs> day as well. Um, so to break things down, like I said, when I graduated, I knew a lot, but I was really surprised when I graduated how little I knew about the in-depth of football, you know, just the, the organization itself. Um, so on a collegiate level, I'm sure you all know this, you have the AD, so he just oversees everything, he's AD. You have, this is just a snapshot example, compliance, sport marketing, they're individual entities. They help, sports marketing works, it helps, and communicates with the sports and is, you know, working to help them and promote them and everything that goes into it, but they are separate from football. Football, on the collegiate level, you have the head coach, assistant coaches, the director of football operations who does everything from travel to the team, security for the team, hotels, um, checking up on grades, I mean anything and everything that involves the players, 
and just the logistics behind the team, that's the DFO. He does, or she, I actually don't think there are any, she's on like a, in a not in an SEC, not for an SEC team, but um, director of recruiting on a collegiate level handles all the high school prospects um, and you know it's so different from the NFL. My mom always jokes and it's like she does recruiting for the Jaguars. Like it's scouting, it's a little bit different. And by a little bit I mean it's completely different. It's polar opposite. Collegiate, you're you're trying to convince kids to come play for your school, play for your program, come be a bulldog. Um, scouting, we choose. We, we choose who we want. The guys, when you get to that level, it doesn't matter. They want to be with the team, you know? Um, so it's who fits us, who fits our scheme, who is going to play the best with us. Um, so it's, it's pretty, pretty different um, on that sense. Professional. We have our owner. Most people don't know this. Business and football on a professional level are completely separate. They're not in the sense that we're under one roof. We represent the same team, the same morals, the same goals, everything. Um, and we work as a team. We work to help them. They work to help us. But in terms of how we are run, we're very separate. Um, so we have a president, Mark Lamping, who is amazing. He was the president of Anheuser-Busch. He was the president for the St. Louis Cardinals for years when they won the World Series. I mean, he's just, he's top notch. Um, he has everything from marketing, ticketing, um, you know, every, accounting, finance, everything on the business side is under him. And then on the football side, technically, technically Dave, who's my boss, our GM, is over everyone in the Jaguars organization. The GM is over everyone, business or football. He's just, except for the owner. He's not over the owner. But we don't operate that way. Obviously, Dave and our head coach, Coach Bradley, are very much so, you know, they operate together. Um, so under Coach Bradley, you have the assistant coaches. Under Dave's tree, this is really watered down. I just put my department. Our GM, he has equipment strength and conditioning, uh, medical, you know, we have a whole medical team. Our strength and conditioning staff is like six guys um, who are there, you know, specifically. We have nutrition on our side, football administration, and, which is really contracts, really actually mainly contracts. It's practically, we have a whole travel group that does all of our team travel and everything from that standpoint. So there are, none of them are shown on here, but it is huge. I mean, we have hundreds of people that work for the Jaguars. Um, my department, director of college scouting and director of pro scouting, because not one guy can do both. Director of college watches all the college guys, manages all of our scouts, because like I said, not one person can watch all the college guys prepare for the draft and then watch all the professional guys. So the director of pro scouting watches all of the free agents that are, you know, constantly moving around in the pool of football. He watches all the other teams. He's in charge of the advance report. Um, and then we have nine road scouts um, who live in various parts of the U.S. and they scout their region all strictly college. Um, so we have nine of them, two scouting assistants who are basically scouts in training, but they're in-house, they're, so they're with us in-house and they do just, you know, what you would do at an entry level, grunt work, stuff like that. Um, and then there's me, and I have a new position. There, there hasn't ever been exactly what I am, um, but that's okay. We're just blazing a trail. Um, and then we actually, I didn't put him on there, we have one pro scout that's in-house. So he actually helps our director of pro scouting watching all of, all the guys. I'm actually going to go back to here because I didn't finish. So we do background checks on all the players, um, not just, not just if they have arrests, but social media, medical, you know, we don't, 
you don't really want a guy that's blowing up social media with a bunch of ridiculous things. You know, that doesn't, you've seen how that can affect a franchise um, on a lot of levels. And college is the same way. You know, guys, they put stuff out on Twitter, they get in trouble for it because no one wants the negative attention. So I conduct all of our background checks. I do, I look for arrests, I look for things on social media, I look for injuries um, that we didn't necessarily have in our system. Um, player workouts, we bring in guys every every week, um, work them out, see if they're, you know, how they're looking. If we need someone to bring up on practice squad, because we're bringing someone up from practice squad, let's say we have a wide receiver go out with an injury. We pull up a wide out from the practice squad. We bring in guys, work them out, we bring someone up to fill his spot in the practice squad. Because it's imperative that you're full so you can have practices. You need full roster to practice. Um, for the draft, we have 30, every team has 30 official visits they're allowed to use. And the official visits are, you pinpoint, okay, these are our 30 guys we're looking at for our draft. And not necessarily the top best, you know, it's not necessarily the top five guys, because if you have the first pick at number 12, then most likely you're not going to get those five standout guys that you know, boom, 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 are going to go. But you're going to get, you know, the best of whatever. There's so many good players. It's, it's insane. But you get 30 official visits to bring these guys in. You interview them, they meet with everyone. I mean, they meet with me. And they actually they have me meet with them because I am younger, so they'll relax a little bit with me and kind of I'll get to see a little bit more of their personality as opposed to when they go in to meet our GM there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, but with me, they're like, what's up? How's it going? You know? So they have me meet with them just because I'm a little bit younger. They'll relax and show me a little bit more of their personality. I loved it. It was like my favorite part of my job in the spring just because you, you know, <laughs> eating lunch with all these big name players, like, I mean, everyone. I ate lunch with everyone. I mean, Johnny Manziel, just anyone you can imagine. It was just kind of fun to see them on a personal level as opposed to on film. Um, so we bring all them in. I do all their travel. I make their schedules, conduct the interviews, do all that. And then the draft, of course, that's building up to the draft. Um, leads into maintaining the draft board. We keep an active draft board all year round and an active free agent board. Um, free agents would obviously be pro players. Draft board constantly moving, constantly changing. Um, you know, it's it's uh, one guy. They do spring evaluations, and he could be at the top of our draft board, and he could move. Or one guy who could be totally out of the blue, came out of left field, and you know, end up being our first round draft pick. You just you never know. So you keep a working board which I'm in charge of, help with, with the, the scouting assistance. We, uh, we have magnets that we move um, and make. So, uh, let's see, training camp. You all, all know what training camp is. There's a lot that goes into that. Um, and then my main part of my job is our scouting system. We use uh, a form of EXOS. I don't know if you all, EXOS is big big company, it's kind of the big film company, um, but they have a scouting system that they just came up with and we, along with a couple other teams, are kind of championing that scouting system. So a lot of my job is stats entry, stats pulling, making lists and charts and whatever you can imagine for my bosses. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. So. I asked my two bosses and our GM to give me some advice because so now I'm wise beyond my years and I'm sure y'all are really soaking this in for everything it's worth, but these are the real pros. Um, so I wanted to get them to give y'all some advice because they're the ones that really uh, make it count. So our GM said, make yourself indispensable. Um, whenever you have the opportunity, make yourself indispensable. He said, 
His first job, he used to get his boss hot dogs and cigarettes before every game. And one game, he was just deathly sick. I mean, could not come to work. It just couldn't happen.